Okay, guys, let's just finish off this question. So 5.4 gives us this f of x um, graph uh, or trig function. So it's sine x plus 25, cos 15 minus cos x plus 25, sine 15. So you should be thinking, oh, that kind of looks like an identity, right? It looks like this one here, right? So we know that it can be simplified into this sine x plus 25 minus 15. Okay, probably going to have to use that when we answer the questions. Then it says, determine the general solution of f of x, um, a general solution of f of x equals to tan 165. So now what I've done is I've written out the equation that we had there, right? And I've set it equal to tan 165. I've simplified it using that um, identity I showed you. That becomes x plus 10 equals tan 165. Now, we know that I've now simplified tan 165, put that into my calculator, right? Oh, not 168, sorry. Um, and it gives us that, okay? So basically what we know, right, is sine is going to be negative, right? Now, I crossed this out here, but we actually do need this, right? So you have this cost system, right? Where is sine negative in these two quadrants, right? So now what we need to do is we need to get our reference angle. Remember, our reference angle is not negative, right? It's just an acute angle, right? So all we do is we say... Um, uh, sine, the inverse version of sine, and then I'm going to say ne the negative of the answer, because the answer was negative, so we just want the positive version of that to get our reference angle. So our reference angle is 15.54, okay? So now we know that we're going to be in quadrant 3, right, and quadrant 4. So we know that x plus 10 is going to equal... 180 plus 15.54 plus k times 360, right, in the third quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, we have x plus 10 equals to 360 minus 15.54 plus k times 360. Remember here that k is an element of, is that real numbers? Yeah, real numbers. Okay, right, it's always important to put that in. Okay. Perfect. Now let's just quickly simplify it. So x plus 10 equals 195.54 plus k360. We have x plus 10 equals uh, 3. Mm, let's put that in our calculator. Let's not pretend we can do that in our head, although we probably could. 344.46 um, plus k360. Okay. Now, let's just get rid of the 10s on both of those sides because we just want x, right? Oh, sorry, 0.54 plus k360. And then x equals 334.46. Oh, my hair's everywhere. Um, plus k360. Okay, so it's that or that because sine is negative, sine is negative in those two quadrants, and that is how we solve it. Okay, so it's important to always have our reference angle, which is an acute angle, right? That is not negative, okay? It's a positive um, acute angle, which we then manipulate according to what quadrant it's in. Okay, that's important. So our two answers is, are this and this. Okay, let's now move on to our last question. Okay, so 5.4.2 says determine the values of x in the interval. x um, is between 0 and 360, for which f of x will have a minimum value. Now, what's important, right, is we're looking at, technically, we're looking at this, right? We're looking at sine x plus 10. Okay, now what's important, right, is when we look at the graph of sine, right? The graph of sine looks like this, okay? It's minimum value, right, so that's 0, that is 180, and that is 270. That's 90, and that is, oh, sorry, that's, sorry, that's 360, and this is 270 here. So its minimum value is generally at 270, right? Because that's negative one, and its maximum value is at 90, which is one, right? You should know this graph, guys. It shouldn't be like, wow, what's she saying? You should know this graph, okay? This is just your, your normal sign graph. So we know that generally the minimum is at 270, right? But this is being shifted. So we say for sine x, min for sine x is at x equals to 270, right? But the min for, let me make sure you can see, for sine x plus 10 is going to be x equals 
270 minus 10, right, which is 260. Okay, so that's important, right? Because basically it's wanting you to display whether you understand or know the form of a sine graph and whether you can manipulate it, right, to get what the minimum would be for a shifted sine graph. Okay, cool. So that is all for this question. I hope that was helpful. 